Welcome to a brand new season of Life Off-Road. We're kicking off the year with an epic three-part adventure just over the South Australian border in the breathtaking Canunda National Park. Here we are, South Australia, it's turning the weather on. Beautiful crystal clear water. The views here are just absolutely stunning. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Got up over the sand dune, it looked amazing. But it was when we went to turn around that it all went south. She's soft down here on the beach. We were just sinking and the tide was coming in real fast. I need a snatch and I need one quickly. I'm bogged, Brad is bogged, Brian was bogged. All of a sudden, everyone just started digging. Will we beat the tide? Go, go, go! Will the vehicles survive? Will we make it out? Join us for the next three weeks to find out. Well, we've finally made it to South Australia. Borders have been closed for a couple of years. It's been a long time coming. And here we are on the beach, Eight Mile Creek. What an absolute ripper spot. We've had a beautiful campsite last night. So we're at Eight Mile Creek at a private property, friends of ours, Kathleen and Mally. So today is day one of three days on the limestone coast down here in South East South Australia. We're really looking forward to what today has to offer. Done some modifications to the car. We've put the Boss Aluminium rooftop tent on top, which I slept in last night for the first time, and looking out at the ocean, waking up to the sound of the waves crashing this morning. Superb, absolutely a ripper product. I've had an incredible night's sleep in the Tanami X11, and we're up and ready for a big day on the tracks. How awesome is this, Mike? What a fantastic spot. So I'm going to have a look at that auction. This is what we've been looking for for summer. We can't thank them enough. It's an absolutely delightful place, and we had a really great night last night. The best host ever. ever. <laughs> As you can see behind us, just an absolute pristine beach, and this is where we started our day this morning. Smells. <laughs> <laughs> it smells. Was that you? <laughs> no, no, Pete, it wasn't. I haven't eaten any seaweed today at all. <laughs> the beach here changes all the time, so when we've been here in the past, there's hardly any seaweed and it's just all just beautiful sand. And this time round, they haven't had a high tide for a while, so there's a lot of old seaweed clumped well, up yeah. on the beach and it's a bit smelly. The, the beach is good, but the smell's not <laughs> good. <laughs> The beach is actually quite hard and firm because they've had rain the last few days and we've had it around the country. The sand's quite rough in places, but it's all good going. And whilst we didn't know what to expect, the fact that we've got our tyres down just increases the comfort and reduces the impact on the terrain. Running our air pressures at about 28 through the sand today, although we probably didn't need to drop it down from 32 that we currently run as the sand is very packed. One of the pieces of safety equipment that we do need when driving on the beach, and it's found not just for the beach for the dunes, but going into the tall scrub areas, because a lot of these tracks were basically cut through scrub and they were windy, so there was not a lot of vision for oncoming cars. So we do have, and you'll see in the background, a sand flag. This is the sand flag. We've already screwed one of the sections together. The billet aluminium joiners, you just screw them together once they're screwed together. Then the fitting basically looks like a, a solid airline fitting. And that's effectively what it is. So that just goes on here, and your sand flag's fitted. It's that easy. Great run along the beach there from our accommodation. And first up is the biggest obstacle, guys. We've got the Eight Mile Creek. 
a freshwater flowing creek. It's looking pretty awesome. Who's up for giving it a crack? 360 definitely in. We're in. Our first creek crossing was quite interesting to see the way we all pull up there. Make sure it's all good and then our esteemed leader marches his way through there and we all follow. Oh yeah guys, that's awesome. Bring it on through. Simon was the first one to get the big mighty eye echo through it. Absolute ripper's crossing. Oh, that's a bit true. You gonna put your four-wheel drive on, Bryce? It's already in. Oh. Of course it is. Let's dip off nice and slow. Oh! <laughs> it's almost slow. All of us went through nice and easy, very minimal impact. We're continuing our run west along Eight Mile Creek Beach, taking care to stay clear of the vegetation and ocean, being mindful of other beach users, limiting our speed, and keeping an eye out for the deep creek crossing and that stinky seaweed. Oh, smell that! <laughs> <laughs> it's great. And it smells delightful. Should bottle that order. I can't get over these swans. There's so many of them. I don't believe I've seen a. Um, is it a gaggle or is it a flock? What's a collective noun for swans? It's a group. It was Deep Creek. Yeah, it was Deep Creek, wasn't so deep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hang on a second. Wait a, wait a second. Wait a minute. 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 And while we can call a group of swans a bevy, a herd, a game, or a flight, they can only be a bank when they're on the ground. What a beautiful, crystal clear freshwater stream. Look at that creek. That is just so clear. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Look at Not too bad, is it? After crossing Deep Creek, we headed inland, north of Port Macdonald, and in search of another geographical feature the region is famous for. We've heard it was a small little sinkhole just around the corner, so we headed out there and there it was, this beautiful little blue turquoise coloured sinkhole. It was quite amazing, wasn't it? It's just dead flat around the place and there's just this hole in the ground. The walkie, was... walkie, walkie, flat, big hole. This area is pretty full of sinkholes. People were allowed to swim in it and they said it wasn't too bad. That was pretty special. I was a bit keen to have a jump in there, but there was not enough time. You would have driven past, I wouldn't know it was there, only the fact that someone had told us. This area offers a massive diversity of scenery and attractions, but we were here for the sand and the beach was calling. Back south, Cape Douglas Road led us to Middle Point Track with what we thought would be another opportunity for some excellent sand driving. As we made our way down onto the beach, there were a couple of warnings, very sharp turns, very soft sand, and over the radio, everybody was excited. This is what we came for, some really good sand driving. It's soft in there, guys. Be careful. It's very soft in here. This was more like the soft sand I was used to, but it was a lot of opposite lock, and we were barreling along the beach. So the sand out here was really surprisingly compact, and that was probably because of the amount of rain they had. So we kind of expected the same out past Port McDonald, but it wasn't really. It was kind of fluffed up and churned up. The bank that we were actually driving on led us to be driving basically at 45 degrees. A fantastic spectacle. The beach is quite short and steep down to the waterline. Yeah, it had it off camber, didn't it? Really down to very, the water. Very much so. The front wheels in one rut, rear wheels in another rut, <laughs> and for a good two or three hundred metres. Sideways all the way, get on the rock. Well done, Dal. That's good. Do you reckon we're aired down enough? No. Don't stop, Simon. <laughs> Keep going. Why don't you stop in trouble? 
but it was very clear to see what was unfolding up front with Simon and the Big Eye Veco gradually getting further and further sideways until it was just an untenable prospect that this was going any further. The guys from 360 did an amazing job to get around him. There was that much seaweed, so really we just seaweed, spun so our we wheels. Caught, caught, and we caught. had the seaweed flicking up, up to the windows, like it was full on. I'm going to head up. I'm going to head up. I'm going to head up. Front's going down. To the point where Simon did actually pull us all up, and he got stuck, Mike got stuck, Brad got stuck, we got stuck. Hyde was coming in, so we say hey, we better get around and get out of here before we become one of those people on YouTube. One of the great things about the soft section of sand we went into is you're actually starting to use 90% of your brain, 10% you'll make mistakes, but you're actually using 100% of the vehicle. So you're looking at your tires, your pressures, your diff locks. So some of the guys hadn't engaged their diff lock. lock on that scenario is, is the best thing to put in because what it's going to do as soon as you lose traction on one of those wheels your diff lock's going to pick it up under your side that just could be it that's all you might need is just that little bit of traction plus your tires some of us were down at 20 psi in a scenario where you're bogged like that i'd get my tires down to 10 psi and more times you'd get out of it when we got to the position where we've gone as far as we could and started to burrow because of the camber, it wasn't too difficult to actually just back out of it, so we needed no recovery as such. We just manoeuvred our way out of it. That was quite good, and even going back was a lot of fun too, because all the sand was churned up by this stage, so it was even softer. Momentum was my friend. <laughs> After all the vehicles were recovered, we turned around, headed back up the beach the way we came. The tricky part about this was we had rutted it out so badly coming off the beach out of the dunes that now we had to contend with going the opposite direction to get back to where we came. Oh, Charlie. Yeah. It's not stuck. This proved quite a challenge for me in particular. I took three or four goes to get it, but it's all about manoeuvring your vehicle, having it in the right spot, not bogging down and causing yourself to dig in too deep that you aren't going anywhere. We selected low range, very easily reversed out of our ruts and then powered on through it. So it was easier to go forward and then come back from the left hand side. With more momentum and the more speed, we hit top of the dunes and went easily through. Easily? You're funny. Ha. I wouldn't call it easy. So my take on it is Mike told us there's no way you'll get bogged if you go straight through, turn around and just give it your all. So you went flying past. Everyone else had got chopped up and had to go three or four times. You were up to third gear by the time you had your momentum. You nearly flew over that thing and nearly took out the cameraman. I didn't want to show off, so I, I, I slowed down. <laughs> didn't want, you didn't slow down in third gear. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you are having way too much fun. <laughs> After we left there, once we come out of the, off the sand, the next section was almost opposite. It was all rock and quite severe rock and bumpy sort of stuff. But working our way to the top of this outcrop, there was just a magnificent view of the ocean, beautiful rock pools, crystal clear water, just the whole bit was blue sky, sunshine, magnificent. Fantastic for people without vertigo. <laughs> it's fairly high. <laughs> From the car park, there was a steep but short hill climb up to the rocky crests that overlooked the whole ocean. The scenery was nothing short of spectacular. Oh, rushy. You 
sea for miles, we had dairy farming country on our right and nothing but ocean on the left. Look at it. It's awesome everywhere. Wherever you look, it's bloody awesome. This is just incredible, awesome terrain. Absolutely spectacular and something that I won't forget for a long time. As we left the first look out and headed towards the second one, the roads really narrowed up and the rocks just got sharper than any that I've seen before. The first stop was sensational and then the second stop was even better and then the third one was even better after yeah. that. Just, just kept getting kept better. Getting better and better. Now this trip, Mike, I believe you've been away in a new rooftop tent. Yeah, we fitted up the other day one of the RT1 overlands from Boss Aluminium and it's as comfy as all hell inside in that rooftop tent. Brilliant view, it's insulated very well. Absolutely superb, beautiful mattress inside in it. Australian made, it's made in Bayswater in Victoria. It literally is, it's 30 seconds. You, know, you get up, put up four of the poles on the awning side of it and um, open the way she goes, that's it. So it's uh, just a great time saver. I must say it's not camping, it's glamping. Just north of our second lookout, we managed to find our way down to the beach in this beautiful cove area. Then you come up over this craley ground like you're coming out over an, um, an Arab desert and all of a sudden there's a beautiful secluded beach. You know, we drove down onto a couple of them and you could be down there for days, I reckon you wouldn't see a person. You, know, you might be there for weeks and you wouldn't see a person. Just a really, really nice spot. You're looking out to these beautiful rock plateaus, very, very shallow water in front of you. Just, I think, one of those places you'd love to sit down there for a couple of days and just chill out. What a beautiful beach. It's stunning. We're traversing through rugged, undulating, narrow terrain. Nothing short of fantastic. And when you come up over those high crests and get to look out over the ocean once again, it makes it all worth it. And that track's quite undulating and pretty rugged, but you definitely have to have your flag on because obviously it's really single narrow tracks. So you're in a lot of trouble if, you, if a vehicle's coming the other way. We went from there to another outlook area, a little cove, and there was the rock flint on the beach. I have a sample. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is incredibly sharp. It's knife edge. We saw some of the people that built a fire pit effectively with this stuff, which is quite dangerous because the air pockets in it will expand and it will explode. It breaks apart and can do all sorts of damage. As we turned around and made our way for home, it was really interesting to see the whole landscape basically in reverse. Everything looked higher, looked steeper, looked rougher. You've really got to be switched on, pick your lines. Everybody was on the radio saying, we've got to wash out here and we've got a deep hole here. That's fine to hear it until you're actually on it and need to negotiate it, pick your line. You know, very interesting, really got to be on the money and make sure you're really switched on. To me, I say to everyone, if you want to see real Australia, you've got tropical Australia, Queensland, Darwin. If you want to see raw, bare bones Australia, South Australia is where you want to go. You're going to see amazing deserts, rock formations, water like this, which is just, yeah, it's, you could be in the Bahamas anywhere in the world here. Water is incredible. Well, today was, was one out of the box. It was very different. A lot of the, tri the trips we do are into the bush and mud and a different terrain. This was the first time driving on the beach. Started heading back. Can't wait for tonight's feast. Hopefully you've got the good footage of him out in the boat catching craze, but we can't wait for our feast tonight. We were coming back to what Malcolm caught yesterday. Crayfish, we got some snapper going on. He's gonna make some fresh salads for us. He is the ultimate horse. And as a chef myself, have someone cook me dinner, I'm in heaven. Bloody hard day at the office today it was. <laughs> Such a tough day and then we've had to come back to crayfish. some crayfish and beer. <laughs> Thank you.
Really incredible experience, absolutely cannot wait for tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but if it's anything like today, I can't wait.